Okay, with the markings on the hull basically done now, we're going to go ahead and move to the turret. The markings on the turret are going to consist of the two numbers found on the sides, as well as the 502 Mammoth, which will be painted on the rear bin. For the side markings, these are going to be done, of course, with my stencil method. Now, they're going to be applied in the exact same way. The only difference will be the type of paint. Like what was showcased on the hull for the paint, I utilize spray paints for the paint application. However, for the markings here, they're going to be utilizing Tamiya paints in order to get the base color on. Also, unlike the the German crosses where I have two sets of stencils, one for the inner and one for the outer. For the markings, the inner ones are painted with the stencil, however the outer strokes are actually done by hand with a paintbrush. Applying the stencil is no different. I'll just peel off the sticker paper backing. Always be careful when you're peeling these off, specifically if you have things like on a five, <clears throat> these little nubs over here. If you're peeling them off this way, they, they can snag and you can possibly rip them off. So you have to be careful with that. Same thing also with threes. We have Mickey Mouse here, ears on the inside of this one. There we go. All right, ready for the adherence. Once the stencil is on, of course, you're going to want to protect from any sort of overspray. Now on the turret, it's actually a lot easier to mask up compared to the size of the hull, just with the, the actual size of the locations. It makes it a little bit simpler. Now, because I am going to be utilizing the airbrush, this does give you a little bit more precision and control over the size of the mist compared to the spray paint. And with that, that allows you to have a smaller area that you really need to mask up. Still having said that, however, I am not going to take any chances. And one more over the smoke grenades for good measure. Okay, we're now ready to apply the paint. Now, like I said before, for the use of the red markings, I'll be utilizing Tamiya Acrylic Flat Red. I've used this color on many builds in the past, and personally, I always did like the Tamiya Acrylic series. They just work well in my experience. The units get applied again via the airbrush. Now my air compressor is fully topped off, so I should be able to just apply the paint without any issues. Okay, here we go. All right, make sure that the paint's thoroughly diluted. All right, here we go. Of course, you want to have a respirator when you're doing any sort of paint either the spray paint or with the airbrushing like I have right now. Basically two passes where all that's needed and the marking is done on this side. I'm going to wait for it to dry slightly, peel off the tape, and apply another marking stencil to the opposite side of the turret. And for the magic reveal, all right, time to rinse, wash, and repeat. And here's the number that I painted the first time, but with the white strokes now added. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the turret over and paint the white strokes on the opposite side so you get to see how I pull this off. 
Now to apply the strokes, this is where the art comes in. The method I'm going to utilize is a paintbrush and the stroke like I saw before was white and I'm just utilizing regular white latex paint. Now the outlines and the strokes on the real numbers were painted in the same format either by hand or if they had the opportunity they had a stencil as well. Now one thing that's interesting about German number markings is that you have a lot of options available to what you can add. You could either leave the markings monotone with this color here and there's also a few other color variations from black or white and then you have the strokes which can be a multitude of colors from white see black yellow and even blue in some cases now of course this depends on the type of tank that you're doing and the type of air that you're modeling but there are lots of options available out there hell there are even ghosted type markings where there's just strokes without any of the numbers painted in the center now to do this, like I said, I'm doing it by hand. Now when it comes to the actual thickness of the strokes, honestly this is just something that I've done so many times that I just have the muscle memory in how to do it. But you can have the option of making the strokes as thin or as thick as you want. Again, there are a lot of options available for the builder. Now to do the strokes, you're going to need basically two things. You're going to need a really fine point paintbrush like this one over here. This one's a bit old, but it's still more than adequate enough at doing the job at hand. And the next important thing is going to be the paint itself. Now, like I said before, this is just standard white latex paint. However, it has been watered down to a really nice thin con consistency. If you try to use the white paint straight out of the can, you're going to have a problem with it being too thick. And then once the, the stroke is applied, it's going to bubble up over the surface and it's just, it, it just doesn't look really good. So once the, the paint is watered down, it applied smoother. Now you may have to add a second coat if need be, but by and large, one to two coats max is all that's needed in my experience. Okay, enough talking. Let me go ahead and start with the outlining. Now I'm gonna just, you don't want too much paint on the brush. So what I do is I just dab a couple drops right there on my hand, which makes the paint more controllable from my experience. Now let's up, start applying the paint. Now you want to have a nice steady hand when it comes time to applying these markings. You don't want to overextend either into the red or too much into the gray. Now if you do, it's no big deal. You just touch it up with, again, the base coat or the marking color itself. This is why, by the way, you do all of this prior to the weathering of the vehicle because if you need to do any touch-ups, there's not, you're not gonna have anything looking out of place or anything. Now, if you wanna make the stroke a little thicker like I just did there, you just apply a little bit more pressure on the other end of the brush and it will give you the thicker weight. Now when it comes to the straightaways you want to make them as squared off as possible. If you're working with a really fresh paintbrush this is easier than with an older one but it's still doable with the older one as well. Now if you have shaky hands, obviously this technique may not be what you're going to be using on your build. And if you notice I don't, I could take breaks in between. I don't have to continue with the line when I'm going through with it. I could just stop periodically and Segment it out. And in, in addition to making the marking look really nice with the extra color on it, it also removes any of the jagged edges from the cut lines that I did before with the X-Acto knife. Now these markings here came out pretty clean and crisp, so I wouldn't really have to edit them too much with the refinement. So 
Only a few little touches up here and there. Kind of feel like Bob Ross at the moment. Adding a nice, happy, happy little stroke. It is kind of nice that most of the German tanks utilize a three number system, which makes it relatively easy to paint these strokes on. But again, once you get the hang of it, it kind of becomes second nature to you. Now for extra stability, I rest the palm of my hand on the side of the turret here. Which gives you a nice, steady work platform. Now, true story, when I was actually working on my King Tiger, doing the, the numbers on that build back, wow, it's been that long now, a few years back, the, whoop, the model was being finished in the dead of winter time, and resting my palm on the side of the turret here in order to make the markings was very, very, very brutal because the tank was ice cold, and you can't do this with gloves on, so... Needless to say, I had to make many pauses and run to the sink in order to put some warm water on my hands because it was getting way too painful. But the things we do for good looking models. Now if you notice, I did nudge my palm onto the little bit of the marking over here. And it was a simple fix. The paint's still wet, so I was able to just patch it up and everything is good to go. But that is something to watch out for. Okay, the three is basically done. Now let me go ahead and move on to the one. One's a fairly quick, obviously. I like to start with the straightaways first. See, like when I was talking about the thinness of the stroke I could just leave it with all this thickness or I could just thicken it up a little bit. When it comes to adding these you want to have them as uniform as possible. It just helps with continuity. Ooh, watch out for little hairs like that. That's always that is always something that will screw up your paint job. I would love to have some kind of some kind of music in the background, but YouTube copyright is a pain to deal with. All right. One this line here is not exactly straight, so let me go ahead and make it a little bit more even. Believe it or not, this is actually one of the aspects of the builds that I enjoy the most because at this point here, the model's basically finished. And it, not too long after this, I could finish the paint finish and get the model out of the shop. That would be nice for all, wouldn't it? Alright, the one's done. Last but not least, the number five. Another tip to point out is, like I said before, you want to slightly dilute the paint prior to applying it. Now, you don't want to use too much water because if you do, then the thing will just run all over the place and that's definitely not something that you want. Unfortunately, it's hard to really dictate in video format exactly how much water to add at any given time because well it's that's kind of something that you really have to build up by feel. After a little bit though you'll you'll be able to just look at the paint and judge for yourself whether or not it's too thick or just right.
I guess another thing to add is at least the German strokes are nice and even in their thickness. It's not like naval strokes, which kind of have a shifted appearance to them. And that gives them that little standoff type effect that you see on warships. Uh, that's not going to be an issue on this guy over here. Wait, yeah, obviously that's way too much paint. Now, if you notice, I'm not using an easel or anything. I just use the palm of my hand. It's just acrylic paint. It's not like anything too uh, hazardous. Some people probably be like, oh, no, he's supposed to use an easel. Oh, no. Yeah. What do they know? I've only been doing this forever. Do, do, do. Okay. Try to also square off your edges as much as you can. Now with the main markings out of the way, the last two markings that need to be added are the unit insignias. Now on the Tiger one, the unit insignias are located generally in two locations. The first one is located on the one corner of the front armor glasses plate, and the second one is generally found somewhere on the turret. Now for this model here, the unit that this tank will be assigned to is going to be the 502. Now the 502 was interesting in that they had this very distinctive marching mammoth logo and for this model here the mammoth will be going in two locations of course like I said before the smaller one will be mounted or I should say added to the front glasses plate and the second one gets mounted right here on the back of the rear bustle bin. Now for anyone who's a fan of the ECA channel, this unit here shouldn't be too unfamiliar because I've built several Tiger ones from this unit in the past on many of my builds, both 116, 16, and even 135. Now the reason why this, these markings here are going to be mounted on this tank is because this is the unit designation that the customer requested to be added to his build. Now when it comes to the actual Mammoth itself, this particular marking here actually has a personal connection to ECA. This marking, which has been utilized on several of my both larger and smaller scale builds, actually dates back to the first Armortech Tiger one that was built by my father and myself back in 2005. When we were working on that vehicle, my father wanted to have the Tiger one with this type of format, being the all Panzer Grey version, representing the 502. The reason for that, quite simply, he was always a huge fan of the 502 Regiment because of the marking found on their vehicles. It always something that he personally liked. So when it came time to adding the marking to the rear bin of the vehicle, he went ahead and cracked open several of his reference materials and found this exact unit marking found painted on the back of one of these vehicles. It is upon that photograph where he drew this rendition of the mammoth over here. Since then, I've incorporated this exact template on several of the other 1.6 and even 1.16 builds that you've seen posted on the ECA website as well as on the ECA channel throughout the years. And it's really a nod to that old build that my father and I did. Now, one thing that's also interesting to point out is that this marking here was applied by hand in the field by any number of individuals. Because of this, there are going to be several differences and variations between the hand-painted markings, again, depending on who painted it and when exactly. There are several versions of the Mammoth which look slightly different than this one here, and they alter in both the size and shape of the hump, as well as a few of the other odds and ends found on this critter. For this mall here, however, I'm, of course I'm going to be utilizing the, the tried and true version here. Now to actually apply the marking on, this is going to be done in a different format that was utilized on the other markings that was just showcased in this video. In those other markings, I went ahead and cut everything out with a X-Acto and stenciled them on and painted it. With this one here, it's actually going to be basically hand applied and hand painted. However, the reason why you see it printed out here is that this gives me a good guide in order to get everything in its proper proportions. This technique here I utilize for more elaborate type markings, be it unit identification graphics, like this 502 or the Gnome, which was utilized on another Tiger One, to even several cartoon or animated characters that I've incorporated on several American builds that I've done in the past. 
What I do is I take the image that I either drew myself or found on some other type of venue and I adjust it to scale in Adobe Photoshop. Once I have everything all planned and mapped out, I print it on the paper that we see here. Obviously the small one, like I said before, is for the front collage display and it's just the same one just shrunk down, but the same technique is gonna be utilized. From here, I actually trim out the marking with a scissor or in this case, I'm using an aviation snip. And I'm just gonna basically cut out the marking so that it's the exact shape of the completed insignia. When I'm done with the trimming, it should look something like this. Once all of the extra is removed, we have our graphic now totally isolated. And from here, I can line it up exactly where it needs to go on the rear bustle bin. Just like with the numbers, this technique really allows you to line up exactly where the piece needs to go. Once you're happy with the location, you just hold down the marking and with a pencil, you lightly draw around the outline of your graphic. In this case, it's the 502 Mammoth, but like I said before, it could be anything from a cartoon character to a, another type of German insignia. Really, this technique works with a lot of applications. Now, when it comes to the markings with the pencil, you don't want to dig or gouge into the paint. You just want to lightly draw an outline of where everything needs to go. Also, if you, the thicker you make the line, the harder it's going to be to cover it up with the strokes of paint that will be going over it once it comes time for the actual marking. So it may take one or two more extra coats if you go in really thick and heavy with the pencil line. Here's a quick little pro tip for you. All right. When it gets to the little thinner areas, it pays to hold down to it a little bit. Okay, once the outline is completed, the next step is to start cutting away certain sections of the mammoth here. This will give you the locations of where some of these other inner lines and cutouts go. From you, you can see here, there's nothing over here which segments the hind area from the second leg. And rather than trying to do the guesswork, you can, if you trim off some of these locations, it'll give you an exact location of where they're supposed to go. And once the marking is all laid out with the pencil, it's now time to go over with the paint. Now on the 502 markings that are found on the Tiger Ones, it was just an outline. So you don't have to paint the inside portion of the piece. So for something like this, I'm just gonna go with the white paint with a thin paintbrush and just trace over the, the exact same pencil lines that I just made. By doing it this way, I get the marking exactly how big I want it with the amount of detailing I want it. If you're trying to do this thing freehand, it's going to be a little bit more problematic. For the actual marking itself, I've got my white paint, same one I used from before, and my same paintbrush, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply the marking. Also, like with the numbers, you have to be careful where you put your hand because it could easily smudge and screw everything up. So you want to be careful with that. Okay, 
and there's the marking now applied. The trick again is you want to thoroughly go over where the paint, where the pencil marks were that you made before for your outline. The paint does a really good job with doing that. Now, if you're doing something like this, which is just an outline, you may want to go over one or two times the lines where you can see some slight areas of the pencil marks still remaining. Or if you're doing something with more color to it, then you don't have to be too cautious on the interior portion because you just paint over with the colors that you need to use. But regardless, that's how I do the markings on these vehicles. Now, I'm gonna use the exact same technique for the smaller scale one. However, it's the same technique, so there's no real reason to show that one on screen. And here's the marking now applied to the front armor plate. The application and procedure was identical to the one I just showed on the bin. The only difference was for this marking here, I went with a thinner bristle brush. The reason is pretty apparent. Because of the smaller stature and size of this marking here, the thinner bristle brush was a wiser choice so that you could get the crisp, thinner strokes that are found on this marking. And here we have the tank now with all the markings completed and with the turret and the bin temporarily refitted to the hull. Shortly after filming this take, everything's going to be taken apart again and I'm going to go through the weathering process, which will then really change the color of the tank, making it closer to more in line which you've seen on the other builds found on the ECA channel. Also, I want to point out, if anyone is an avid fan of the channel and you have a very keen detail encompassing eye, you'll probably be feeling a slight sense of deja vu on this build. Well, if you do, congratulations. I'm glad you're a super fan of the channel because this model here is actually the second Tiger One that I've painted with this format with this exact same marking configuration. If we go back a little bit, if we can recall, I recently completed a 116 scale radio control Matto all metal Tiger One, which had the exact same type of configuration. The reason for this is quite simple, is that that model and this model belong to the same collector. When he commissioned me to take this project on, he also wanted the 116 scale model, and he wanted the two builds to be as close to each other as much as possible. In addition to the weathering, the remainder of the tank's detail fittings are going to be added, and this model here is basically on a downslide into completion. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1.6 scale radio controlled Armortech early production German Tiger 1. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, be it 1.6 scale project update videos like this guy here, or the smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted on the channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been started all the way back from Project Start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been showcased on this channel. Finally, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.